it, you know, so it's not going to really light people's eyes and say, oh, you know what, I can't wait to see Ennis in this fight. No, it's just a typical like, oh, man, when are we going to see Ennis against somebody we want to see, you know, so this is not helping his case at all, you know, and and um, I really if I'm at team Ennis, I'd probably consider vacating the IBF title. Welcome, fight fans, to Boxing Scene's Top Stories, only on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George DiMatellis. Quick reminder that download the Pro Box TV app where apps are available. You get everything you need about the sweet science on the Pro Box TV app. Well, I am joined by the champions. We have Chris Algieri, and we got Paulie Malignaggi joining us here on Top Stories. All right, promoter Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing are taking some heat over their handling of IBF welterweight champion Jerome Boots Ennis and his apparent mandatory title bout against Cotton Chukadzian. Now, Ennis beat Chukadzian earlier in his career back in January 2023, very handily, unanimous decision. And Hearn is being criticized for essentially not filing an exception on time with the IBF and not making deals so that Ennis could fight the other welterweight champions at 147. All right, Paulie, should Ennis think of cutting ties with Eddie Hearn? Um, I don't know if that's even possible. Right? I mean, usually you sign a contract and you when you're working with them. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the from a business aspect personally. I don't think that's any of our business. But I I, I will speak on the on the, the the mandatory situation. There comes a time where you might be a little bit bigger than the titles. You know, we know Ennis has had the to wait for title shots, and he's obviously never really won a title in the ring because they had the strip Crawford of it for not going back to Walter Wade. So he's never had the satisfaction of winning the championship in the ring. So is he really attached to this title anyway? I mean, there, there will be other championships he can probably go and fight for and win in the ring. Um, there comes moments where you, you probably are better off vacating the title uh, to chase, uh, you know, bigger fights, just so to speak. Um, and I'm not even talking necessarily about weight. I'm so even in the 147 pound division, you know, there may be, bigger fights for Ennis. There probably is bigger fights for Ennis than Chukazi and who he's beaten pretty handily just at the beginning of last year, you know? So it's not, it's not something that is going to really attract a lot of eyeballs. And, you, and you're in a situation, if you're drawing Ennis, where you're trying to not just to win and look good, where he's always done that, but you're also trying to create some, some, uh, uh, some, some momentum in favor of the, your promotability and your ability to be in the conversation for the bigger fights. And honestly, fighting Chukazi and, isn't really going to do that right now. You know, it was uh, uh, an uneventful fight the first time around. Um, it's probably going to be an uneventful fight the second time around if it happens. You know, Chikatsin was durable, but it was that that was about it. It wasn't a fight that was all that competitive, you know, so it's not going to really light people's eyes and say, oh, you know what, I can't wait to see you Ennis in this fight. No, it's just a typical like, oh, man, when are we going to see Ennis against somebody we want to see, you know, so this is not helping his case at all, you know, and and um I really, if I'm at Team Ennis, I'd probably consider vacating the IBF title and uh, maybe moving on to looking what, what other opportunities there might be. And I'm sure that, that that's being considered. But as far as leaving Hearn, he just got there. I think there's a contract anyway. And uh, I do think that uh, right now, from what I'm seeing, there's not really a big difference from what was the way he was treated at PBC and the way he's being treated at Matchroom so far, if this is going to be the next move. But let's see what happens. Yeah, Champ, I agree. In, in terms of you know his promotional deal and whatever, I'm, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. But in terms of this fight, um, yeah, this is not going to wet anyone's palate for, for a, a, a drawn Ennis fight. I mean, I don't know what was offered, what was, what was promised to Ennis with this deal coming, but uh, a fight with Avanesian and then a rematch with Chugazian, which was not a thrilling fight by any means, um, is definitely not what people would expect from Ennis and this new promotional deal that he has, and we're going to get to see him rolled out. Um, it was nice that he got the fight at home in his last fight. You know, he got the win, he got the stoppage, that was important. Um, bro broke off some rust, but to go fight this fight next, it seems like a step backwards. And first of all, I mean, or second of all, how did Chugazin get back to the number one position? And if you, if you look at his record, you know, he, he fought a journeyman, uh, defeated him in, in Spain, and then he had two fights in, in, in Germany against not widely known guys to now get back to the number one position again uh, once again in order to to make this fight happen it's it's it, that's kind of curious to me uh I, I didn't beat anyone who was that i i've seen is uh you know on the world level or, or, or anywhere well known um but and gets right back to this position and it makes a fight that i, I don't know who really cares to see this fight I don't know, a lot most people didn't care to see the first fight 
and uh, especially the way that it, that it, that it panned out. So uh, unless you know, if if Endis does want to hold on to that belt, which I understand, you know, uh, Bernard Hopkins famously said that belts matter, and you need to keep on, you need to hold on to every belt that you get, and never never give them up. Um, I don't know if Ennis has that same idea. Another Philadelphia fighter, maybe he, he does. Uh, and if that's the case, he's got to go out there and he's got to perform and try and outdo what he did the first time with Chukazian. Or do what you said, champ, and, and, and relinquish that belt. If you are the King Kong of the division, the belts don't really matter. You can be above that and go collect them on your own anyway. Um, but then that's going to create an opportunity for Chukazian to fight somebody else for the title. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's kind of a curious situation that this fight is being made once again. I'm um, not really sure how they're going to play it out, but... I have a feeling that Ennis is going to still fight the fight, uh, go out there and try to outdo himself, hold on to his belt, and then look for bigger fights down the line. Yeah, certainly those bigger fights include Mario Barrios, WBC champion, Brian Norman Jr. just recently named the WBO champion, and Aymanta Stanionis, the WBA champion at 147. Lots of good fights available there for Jerome Boots Ennis to unify the titles at welterweight. I'd like to remind you to scan the QR code and also check out the best live fight series in all of boxing Wednesday night fights. You definitely don't want to miss it here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. I am George Dimitellis, and this is Boxing Scene's Top Stories. Wednesday night fights. Dynamite action on Wednesday night fights every other Wednesday on your boxing channel. Coming up on your next Wednesday night fights, September 11th. Rising Guatemalan star Lester Martinez puts his O on the line against fellow undefeated warrior Joe Sean, Sean Time James. Live from the ProBox Event Center in Plant City. Get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. For more ProBox TV, scan the QR code on the screen or go to the App Store and Google Play. ProBox TV, your boxing channel.